Framer just launched some brand new plugins and here are some of my favorites that you can get right now and they're expanding the plugins over time. So if you go on the website, framer.com plugins, uh, dash plugins, you can see here there's a whole marketplace. So they've got a bunch of different ones. You got some graphical ones, effects, icons, doodles. Uh, you have some more things with the CMS. So you got Notion, Connect, Google Sheets, even Google Search Console, which is really cool. And then you've got more about the design process. So tidying up layers, renaming, Figma Sync, then you can also build your own plugins. So if you're in Framer, you can access the plugins at the top left menu. You can see the menu, it says plugins. I can click on that and you've got a whole bunch of different plugins. You can also search for plugins as well. So I know there's one called Lumi, as you can see here, and there's a few other ones as well. So you've got Logify as well. Uh, you can drop SVG icons in there. Um, Lumi is like sort of like Unsplash. We've got a whole bunch of images, which is really cool. And it's uh, AI stock images. And then you've got Frame of Commerce, which is another one. And then there's another one, um, Frameship, from my buddy Ryan from Melbourne. Uh, you can see they're basically integrating Shopify with Framer now. So once you find the ones you would like, so for example, we'll, we'll try the Lumi one. You can see we can insert images into our design. Uh, so for example, let's type in phone or something. Cool, and we can uh, bring this in, drag and drop it. And there we have it, we've got our image, which is super cool. So instead of going on like FreePick or Invada, you can get images right into here. Uh, this one has illustrations and it's even got 3D as well, which is really cool. So super cool. So Loom is a great plugin. You've also got the Logify one that I showed you before as well. So I'll just open this up and you can see you can just drag and drop some logos in. So uh, you can see we've even got Illustrator and Photoshop logos. So there you go. So maybe you need some social proof in your, or maybe you're showing apps um, or brands you've worked with, you can get their logos. Uh, it's only the icons there, so there's no logo type. It's just the logo marks. but. Uh, you got heaps of different logos here. Way easier than uh, downloading icons from Google. So we can throw in the icons. So maybe we want to, you know, put it in this icon section. Now you've also got tidy up as well. So for example, so I've got all these 3D icons and they're a bit all over the place. If I want to basically keep it neat and tidy, you can use the plugin called tidy up. And you've got horizontal. You've also can change it to random or grid. So if I want to keep it neat, I can change the columns and I can change the column gap as well. We can tighten up, it's really up to you. And then once you're happy with that, we'll click tidy up. And you can see there, it literally put all the images into a neat little grid there. So they're together. So then I can go in here and adjust the images and stuff. So a um, really great plugin to keep everything neat on your canvas. Next, we've got plugin renamer. So if I click this, it will rename some of your layers to make it more neat. So what you want to do is you just want to go into the search bar and you want to search up some of your layer names. So I'm going to click stack and what we can do, we can rename all these stacks to say whatever we want. We can call it layer we can call it wrapper and click rename. Now all the layers on the side renamed all the stacks to wrap now, which is cool. If we want to go, maybe we've got some images. You can left click on it and it'll take you to where that image is. So for this one, you can say main section or something and rename it. So it will change it. So you can literally change anything, any layers you can rename. If you've seen a pattern um, and you just want to keep it neat, this is the fastest way to like rename your layers. So this is a good little hack to do that. Another great one is Phospho. So with this one is a whole bunch of icons, which is great. So the royalty free, you can use it on any project. So if you want to put some icons in here, you can actually change the style. So maybe you want thin or light or regular, bold. You've also got fill and you've also got duotone as well. So maybe you want this duotone one, you know, we'll drag and drop it in there. So now you can see we've got um, these icons that we can use, which is super cool. So I've got two bold ones and then these ones are the duotone ones which I really like. So this is really great if you just want to quickly Pull the website together and start bringing in those icons. You can also go plugins and click browse plugins. Once you do that, it'll take you to the um, plugin website. You can also filter by paid or free. So you can see um, all the plugins they currently have. And people are constantly building more. It's gonna, you know, be, be built out. So we've got look spell checker, you got frame of sync, which is cool. You got outsetter. This will help you with the membership site. If you want to build a custom membership site, that will be a paid one. What else we got? We got uh, blocks, which is cool, semflow, frame of forms. 
style guide generator. So within the next year or so, there'll be heaps of, heaps more, heaps more. Another cool one is the ASCII effect. So this will turn your images using like a, this certain style, like into like this code type of thing. So for example, if I select this icon right here and you can see what it will turn it into, you can change the characters, but it'll basically fragment your design into using characters. You can change the side as you can see the text there, make it really small. Uh, background, if you want to do white or red, uh, and then I can go insert. So you can play around all those settings here and you can create this funky cool design. It will be like if you're doing maybe a tech or digital type of style, then it will work for that. But yeah, you could play around with this effect. Let's do another one, for example. And there we have it, we got this cool design. <laughs> We're using that, using that cool flex. So that's a, another fun plugin to do. Maybe if you want to turn your logo into it. I don't know, I, pr I probably wouldn't use it, but I think it's a cool logo. You've also got Notion now. So with Notion, you can actually sync a collection using data in a Notion board. So we can go to the Notion plugin and we can create a new collection. So basically this plugin will create a new collection for you that can be synced at any time. So we can just say um, Notion, Collection test. I'm gonna click enter or create. So you just gotta log in and connect your Notion account. So I'm gonna go in and do that. So it'll basically pop up like this and you wanna connect it. So you can uh, select the pages. I'm gonna select it and then I'm gonna type in, I just created a page from a collection test. So I've got that and then I'm gonna click allow access. So boom, we're authenticated, which is cool. So now we can go back and I'm gonna go to the collection as you can see here. Just did a quick little database and click the three dots at the top. And then what you want to do is go down to frame, as you can see. And so you can see um, it can read the content uh, at the moment. You want to, you can actually disconnect it or you can connect to other things. So you can see that it can actually, it has mixed access. So now it's selecting this database that I just created now. I click sync and it's selecting top brands, which is this. So you can see this, this is the database right here. And I'm going to go back. I'm just going to click next and then it, I'll just let it import all those columns. So it imported the name, um, whatever, this tag, it could be number, phone number, email. And you can have more columns, like you can create more details and whatever content. Maybe you had a blog or something like that. Um, so we can see we've got it here. You can select on it and it's basically created a CMS collection. So you can import whole collections, which is really cool. And let's just say we made some updates and changes. All we can actually do is we're going to go back to Framer. And now if we go to the top, you can see you've got Sync Manager and you've got Plugin. So I'm going to click Sync and it should make those changes. Cool, so we made those changes into Notion. We added uh, a few extra pieces of content. You can see we've got Logitech and Adobe now, which is really, really cool. And then um, we added those files as well, but it seems like files and media, this probably doesn't work. So you can add like authors, like if you're gonna do a blog, so you can add text and etc. cetera. Um, what else? And then you can click manage and we can always just customize the fields here. I can say phone, email. You can see files and media, it's unsupported. So some of the fields in Notion might not be supported yet in until they update it. We've also got CMS export. So if I go to plugins and click CMS export, that collection that I just made with the Notion, I can select that and it will take all that data and we can actually export it. So if I do that, it will export to a CSV, um, to a spreadsheet, and then I can just go to uh, sheets. Okay, cool, so my downloads folder. And then let's just go to sheets and we go, I'll go file import. And then let me just quickly double click that. And then we can see, we'll just leave everything as is and click import. And then you can see it imported that data from Notion, which is amazing. So this is great if you have like, I don't know, big lists or bit, lots of content that you want to send and your client wants it, you can export it into, the, into that. So that's another great plugin as well. Um, so. There's so many great plugins you can play around with. We've also got Lottie files as well. So Lottie files are basically small file animation so they can scale, they're really good. Uh, let's just, let's click on this one. Um, we can change the color palette as well. So maybe I'll go with this orange one or this green one, which is cool. You can create new palettes as well. And let's go save animation. And it's gonna save the .json file. And there we have it, beautiful. And then we can drop it into our design. I can preview it. And there we have our Lottie animation, super cool. Love that. So Lottie files are really great. They're animation files, they're small, easy to use. 
they're, they're lightweight and uh, you can customize them with the Lottie. You can also, you know, create signups and stuff. They do have premium animations, as you can see here, but you got to pay um, for that on Lottie. So those are some of my favorite plugins so far in Framer. So definitely check them out. If you want to get 25% off uh, your site plans, you can just use the code Jeremy. I'll put the link in the description below, but definitely check out Framer. It's it. And yeah, play around with Framer. It's powerful. Got plugins now. It's awesome. If you want to see some other Framer um, websites or inspiration that I've created, then you can check out this video right here.